Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. It's hip to be square. Uh, turning small uh, square pieces of wood uh, gives you an opportunity to practice your creativity and use up those small uh, pieces of really nice wood like this piece of cherry or, or spalted maple. Uh, you can use, cr practice your creativity without having to process large blanks. Let's get started. We're starting with a piece of spalted maple. Uh, it's four and a quarter inches square and one and seven eighths thick. You want to be as precise as possible in marking marking the center. Otherwise, with the shape, it's going to be uneven. So we're going to use this this all. Then we're going to drill a hole right there. So we're going to drill a, a hole appropriate for our woodworm screw, in my case with a Nova it's 5 sixteenths of an inch, so I probably should have done a, should have measured that, but this is probably close enough. Let's see. That's good. Okay, that's going to be the top. Okay, we're going to use a woodworm screw. Uh, this particular one has flats. I've gone ahead and put marks on the flat side, make it a little easier for me to visibly line it up with the Jaw, jaw glides. Pull it forward till it seats behind. Lock it. Now, if this was a larger bowl, I'd probably uh, have a, a metal. I mean, a wooden washer on here. Actually, I've got a. I've got one that fits real well over. I think I will go ahead and use that. Make it even stronger. Stronger fit gives me full contact. This is drill three quarters of an inch, so I'm going to use the full. Uh, full length of the screw. If, if uh, I needed a smaller hole, I could have, of course, used a, a spacer. Before I screw this on, I like to put on a little paraffin. Makes it just a little easier for that screw to, to come on and off. Just hold it on, turn it by hand. I don't know if I was Richard Raff and I'd be using a homemade screw chuck. I gotta make one of those one of these days. Okay, you want to make it pretty snug, otherwise it's going to get tighter and tighter on you anyway, so there we go. This is flat, but each side it's not uh, perfectly parallel with each other, so I've got to face it off first thing. Just the tool rest, so I can cut on center. People say, how high is the tool rest? High enough to get you to cut on center. I'm using a 3 8 inch bowl gouge. Double scraping cut. Pull cut. Get the speed up a little bit. I'm up to about Recess. So I'm going to go ahead and use my template gauge to kind of mark that. This is the bottom. Let's check it. It's not exactly. I need to go just a hair bigger than that. There we go. Okay. I'm going to uh, remove some of that wood in the middle. And then I'll come in there with my recess tool. I'm going to make it shallow. It's going to hold about a sixteenth of an inch. Sixteenth of an inch should hold it. Hard to judge sixteenth of an inch like that. These are my dovetail tool. I'm going to come in there. Shoulders got a recess. I'm going to smooth this up just a little bit. 
uh, and finish finish this recess. I'm going to do that using my skew as a negative scraper just to flatten it out a little bit. Get rid of some of those tool marks. Okay, I'm going to sand that, cut, put a couple of uh, V grooves in there. So I've got it sanded nice and smooth. Now I'm going to put just a couple of V grooves to kind of finish off the bottom a little bit. There we go. These are fun projects because they take small uh, pieces of wood, uh, so it gives you a chance to perfect your, uh, your technique and, and tool control. Uh, here's the first one I did where I've got a kind of concave on the bottom and a matching concave on the top. This one I'm going to do just opposite of that. So I'm going to kind of come up more of a traditional bowl shape on the bottom and then concave uh, down into the, the opening on the top. That's my plan. Good to have a plan. So again, using my 3 8 inch uh, bowl gouge, I'm just going to come along the bottom. And slow this. Now I'm going to get, because I'm turning air, I'm going to get this speed up a little bit about 1800. Here's the formula for, the, for that. Kind of introduce the formula uh, in the picture here. Slow your feed rate. That is how fast the tool is moving. I think I'm going to switch to a, uh, a little different flute shape, my, more of my finishing tool, and see if I have a little better luck controlling that. I'm going to go ahead and move my tool rest a little more, angle it a little bit more, and close so I get good support. Angling it in the direction I'm going just a little bit, as long as it clears. Lock everything down. Out of the line of fire. All the way off. That's shaping nicely. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the direction I'm going. I just want to bring it up just a little bit more on the end. There, so I think I'm going to uh, take one one pass with with this to clean that up for a sand the bottle. That looks good. I'll go ahead and sand it up. I carefully check the corners and look for any possible tear out. I don't have any chip out, but I've got just a little bit of tear out, so I'm going to carefully hand sand that just a little bit. Get rid of any minor little tear out I've got. This is fairly soft wood, this spalted maple. It's actually turning better than I thought it would. Okay. I'll go through the grits on that. I'm using this handy hand sander to be able to give it a nice flat surface on each side while I'm sanding. This is from Wood Turner's Wonders. I'm now an affiliate marketer with them, so I've got a link. I've got links in their show notes to their wonderful products. If you do it by hand, you're not going to get as flat a surface. Uh, you can control it better when you're you're sanding with something flat. So I'm going to get 
those rough sawn marks off and, and go through the grits. Okay, time to reverse chuck it. I'll just unscrew this. If you want to learn more about the woodworm screw, I've got a link above. Take out the woodworm screw, close the chuck up, slide it in there, press in the middle, and then slowly open it up. And don't turn as hard as you can. We don't want to blow it out. We just want it nice and snug, and I think that will that will do it. Just a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to deal with the the inside. First thing we're going to do is is mark. We're going to mark where the bowl is going to be, and I've got to think about that just a little bit. And I think I'll just put some pencil marks and evaluate it. Um, actually, yeah, yeah. We're just going to put some marks on it, and evaluate it. And depending on how many beads I want to put, that might be okay. Um, I think we can come all the way out to, to here for the beads. I'm going to back up a little bit. I think that's probably going to be the outer perimeter for any bead I might put on there. Um, so that gives me a pretty good feel. So the bowl is going to be... Oh, I think I'm going to bring it in right about there. That'll give me a room for a nice one or two beads on the outside. So, okay, so that's one. So we'll get that middle one. So again, using that uh, 3 8 inch bowl gouge, I'm going to come in there and just start hollowing it out the way you typically would. Get the speed up. I know I've got to go at least as deep as that woodworm screw hole. This was a, almost 7 8 of an inch. slicing cut probably did a little bit better than a scraper. I think I'm going to come in there with this, you know, finishing finishing tool and take one more cut, see if I can't get it even smoother. Roll the thing right down. Just a little bit of a bump in the middle that I think I'm going to have to take out with a scraper. So I'm going to use, use this thin negative rake scraper since it's not going very deep. This will have enough strength. More of a finishing tool. Dead on center. And sanding will take care of that. Okay. I'm happy with that uh, bowl shape. Uh, now I'm going to work on the beads. Uh, I probably should have faced off this, this side before I did anything else to make sure it's, it's clean along the rim. And I think I'll take one pass with this finishing tool uh, out to at least past here that. We're going from this direction. Okay, that's nice and clean up to the edge. Now I've got to decide what kind of uh, bead treatment. I, I like beads, so I think I'm going to put a couple on there. Uh, I'm going to mark it with a with a bead groove first. One there, maybe next one a little bit smaller. And I think I'll do a third one. Maybe 
about the same size. And I'm going to use my detail tool, 3 8 inch detail gouge, to kind of roll over that bead. Then come back. Okay, I'll clean that up, those up with a little bit of sandpaper. It's got a little bit actually. I'm just going to do a slight scraping cut on the top here if it's not going to come to a point. Okay, there we go. Now to mimic the curve on the, I want to mimic the curve on the bottom. So uh, I could draw a line, but I'm just going to visually come back and check it. So I'm going to, I've got to come from off the off the blank into that corner and come on down uh, into that, that bead. Uh, so here goes. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to, I'm going to rub, rub on the bottom like this on the wood. Then I'm going to slowly draw it back until I don't hear it click and then I'm going to just slightly move it forward again. Let's see how that works. Again, get the speed up a little bit to about 1500. So again, with a tool, with a bevel rubbing, slowly back it out. I'm hearing the ticking sound. I come off, and then I go back in. this one bead, this last bead, so I'm going to come back in next to it and cut in. And that'll give me something to shoot for when I come back in this area. So I'm going to come in a little bit farther in, but still turning to later. checking the profile. It's heading in the right direction, but it's not there yet. Got to go a little bit further. So again, I'm going to come in, not from the end this time, but from a little, just, just a little further in and bring it in a little bit, a little bit more. good match. I'm, I'm happy with that. Now all I got to do is figure out how to deal with a little bit of tear out on this edge right here. The rest of it looks looks good. I've got to decide what I want to do with uh, this rim treatment and this be this this large bead. Um, what, do I want to change the shape of that, that outflow? And I think what I'm going to do actually leave these two beads and I think I'm going to make that bowl just Actually, I'm just going to make, make that first bead, it flows into it a little bit smaller. It looks a little large for my taste. Again, anchoring this, coming in with this perpendicular so it won't skate absolutely parallel with the floor. I'm going to come in there and take that cut. Deeper. I just need to widen the widen the bowl a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to round over that edge. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to use this. I think I want to use uh, a scraper. So I'm just going to bring up this negative rake up on this edge and just bring it around a little bit, soften that inflow of your bowl. Come on 
here, I think maybe I'll just uh, try to blend that and make sure I got a nice blend. I think I do. Yeah, so that gives the illusion of three beads. Uh, nature, nature likes uh, odd numbers, so three is better than two. And uh, I'm ready to sand. Uh, this is going to be really pretty. I could sand this by hand, but frankly these little corners coming around make me nervous. So I'm going to power sand with this two inch, uh, these two inch, and I'm going to, I've got the speed, speed slowed down to uh, about a, almost a half of what I turned at. So just pivot it back and forth. Go through all the grit. Pay particular attention to any torn grain that you might want to do manually or spend a little more attention to that, like the middle here. Because I have uh, small amounts of uh, tear out in a couple little places, a little bit still on the inside of the bowl, I'm going to use some sanding sealer to kind of make that final sanding a little easier and stiffen the fibers a little bit. It's a lacquer sanding sealer. Mylans place where I've got some tear out. I've got a couple of corners that are a bit uneven. I may have to do a little hand sanding here with a, a, a little small board wrapped with, with sandpaper to just get that small area like that right there. So these wings are curved just a little bit where I don't want them to be curved. So the easiest way for me to do that is, is put a small strip of sandpaper on a thin piece of, of wood. <coughs> Excuse me. So I've got a nice hard surface and then just get rid of those high spots by hand like this. And this does this in pretty short order. If you turned a small square bowl, let me know what challenges uh, uh, it presented to you in the comments below. Remember, y'all stay safe. Come on back here.